Well, good day, folks. Welcome to this episode of the Profit Easy One. This should be a real short one. We're just going to do another little boxing with some herbs. And I'm going to explain a few things to you about those herbs and about some other things and what they're good for. And um, so let's just go right with it. This is, this is all I got this time. Small box. It's pretty full. But see, my, my minimum order is $200. This is over $200 right here. Um, otherwise, I got to pay a lot for shipping like I had to do before. And then, of course, I have to increase my prices. So I want to keep the prices down. Um, and there's some other things I want to say about how you can save, but we'll save that for another video. Let's just get into what we got here. This one here is called Merlin's Tea. This was actually named after my mentor. This is for diabetes. Oh, shoot. I wasn't totally prepared for this, but let's go ahead and, and get through some of this here anyway. Uh, I may have to pause it here and there, but you probably won't hardly notice it. But he and his brother, they were third generation herbologists. His, his parents were herbologists, and they were born and raised on an herb farm. And they both had childhood diabetes. So she came up with this formula. And like I mentioned in one of my other videos, this is their largest seller worldwide. So you know it must be working. And I actually use it on occasion, not because I have diabetes, but because of all of the great herbs in there and the wonderful things that they do for you. Now, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail about them, but uh, we'll, we will get into some things. Now, I'm going to go into some of the herbs that are, that are in in this in fact let me see i have something here that might make it easier for me if i can find it uh i thought i did yeah all right here's what they say about this particular tea merlin's tea ancient tales of wonder and magic uh, and then it just mentions the things that are in there so i'm going to go through the things that are in there and uh what they're good for all right like i said it won't be totally encompassing but like i said because i want to keep this short you can do your own research if you want i'm going to give you a plenty of good basic now this has bilberry leaf in it now what bilberry actually is is a european blueberry but the compounds in there are better than the american blueberries that's why they have it and this is the one that i told you the british used to have their pilots drink it before flying on missions in World War II because how it improves your vision, especially night vision. But I've actually gave it to a guy who had glaucoma for years and it went away. His doctors were amazed. They said to him, wow, those eye drops work. He said, man, I stopped taking them a month ago. They said, well, you're cured. And I asked him, well, didn't you tell them how it happened? You know, because when I cure these people and they go back and see their doctors, the doctors are amazed, but they never tell them, you, you need to get in touch with EZ1. Actually, you know, or Herb Man, or just my name, whatever they want to call me. But they don't ever tell the doctors, you know. So now, so the bilberry, like I said, it really helps with night vision, um, glaucoma, and diabetes. And the reason that it helps with diabetes is it helps your body to metabolize sugars. So that's how it's very helpful with that. And see, like I said, you don't have to have diabetes to use those herbs that are in this. It's a very good, healthy blend of herbs. All right, so let's see what else we got. Oh, it's actually got blueberry leaf too. So you got some American blueberry leaf and the European blueberry. It could be because there's a little difference in some of the compounds. But overall, the European one is healthier for you. All right, it's got alfalfa leaf. Now, alfalfa is, the, the acronym alfalfa stands for father of foods. And a couple thousand years ago, most of our flour was made from alfalfa and sometimes from flax. And both of those are much healthier than the wheat flour that we have today. But I guess maybe there was more profit into the wheat flour. I don't know. But alfalfa, it tends to grow the roots very deep. So it is very loaded with vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. And what enzymes do, they, they react with your body and cause your body to do things quicker and with more energy efficiency. So that's what's really good about those. All right, let me see what else we got in here. We got oat straw. 
Now, oat straw, I know that it's good for your hair. Um, it's, yeah, because it's uh, high in silica. That's what it is. It's high in silica, so it's good for your hair, your skin, and your nails. In fact, I just talked to somebody yesterday who, if she gets with me, I'm going to get rid of her eczema. The medical profession can't do it, but I can. And it just takes two herbs, but it, you have to have them in, in a certain sequence. And that's part of the secret to healing. And we'll get more into that as we go through here. All right, let's see what else we got in. Dandelion. That weed that grows in your yard. The one that make people make dandelion wine out of it. Dandelion salads. Super nutritious for you. And it is actually, believe it or not, it's a weed. But it's one of my favorite herbs. And it, it helps work as a liver cleanser. It's very good for hepatitis. Although that alone won't cure it. But it is very good for it. And it is a diuretic. And it's the only diuretic that I know of, whether it's pharmaceutical or non, that doesn't deplete your body from potassium. That's why often when doctors put you on a diuretic, they're going to give you potassium too. Because you don't want to be depleting your body of potassium. You need that potassium for your heart and for a whole lot of other things. Like I said, we won't get into all that here. But, yeah, see, when I had the arsenic poison, the number one way it kills you is kidney failure. Even though my heart was so bad. So, definitely, I used plenty of dandelion root to treat my kidneys, and the doctors were amazed. While they were running tests, they could see what it was doing for me. So, and, and it's also very helpful for your heart because of the potassium. All right, what else we got? Okay, we got Eleutro in here. Now, what Eleutro is, it used to be, you didn't used to have to call it Eleutro, but with all of the, um, what do you call it? Political correctness, uh, they want you to call it Eleuthero. And basically, all that Eleuthero is, is European ginseng. I'd rather call it ginseng or European ginseng than Eleuthero. They've, they've caused the names of some of these to have to be changed. You know, you got to keep in mind, the pharmaceuticals, especially in America, the largest lobbyists in the country, they don't want people selling herbs. That's why there was 80 or 90 herbologists that all of a sudden suddenly died. You know, several of them got hit by bicycles. It was all kinds of things because they don't want people like me out here pushing these things because it cuts into their profits. I'm not here doing this for to, to make a killing. I'm here to heal people. They're out there to make a killing and some of what they give you is harmful and will kill you. All right, let me see. Where were we? Let me get back to this bag. I think I already messed up the video, but I'll edit it together later. All right, it's got ginkgo bilboa in it, one of the most studied herbs in the world. And ginkgo bilboa, like I've said before, a lot of these herbs, when your body gets these compounds that are in the herbs into it, it'll get into your kidneys, liver, and other organs, and it'll break some of these compounds down and add maybe some more compounds, maybe some other nitrogen and oxygen or different things. And it knows where to take it in your body, just like the bilberry. It, it helps it to go to your eyes. And several other herbs do that, like uh, eye bright, an herb called eye bright. Marijuana, like, like I've mentioned before, if you smoke some marijuana, it's not going to make all the blood vessels in your body stick out. But it sure will make your eyes red mm -hmm. because your body sends some of those compounds directly to your eyes. And your body does that with a lot of these compounds. It might send, send plenty to your liver, to your lungs, to your heart, to different things in your body. Let's see what else. Oh, oh, and one of the things that they've shown about the ginkgo bilboa. And see, when I had the arsenic poison, I was a total mental retard for, for a while. I mean, I was really in bad shape. And so I was using ginkgo. I still use it. If you saw my other video where there's some herbs there in my kitchen cupboard, that's one of the things that are in there. And I'll often add a couple of teaspoons of that to certain other blends that I'm doing just to help improve brain function. And they've proven that it can improve brain function up to 15%. So for people with dementia and that sort of thing, Alzheimer's, this is a great herb to have. Um, and, and so is Blessed Thistle. And there's a couple others. And they do break the blood-brain barrier and take nutrients and or oxygen to your brain. So, in fact, there's so many herbs that actually break the blood-brain barrier, which, like I said, I'm not going to get into all that here. 
But we were still in the first bag here. So let's get through this unboxing. All right, what else we got in here? We have uh, Uva Ursi. Now, Uva Ursi is another thing that's very good for your liver. Now, keep in mind that uh, diabetes will affect your liver. Yeah, it's going to affect a lot of things in your body. So, what herb were we on here? We were on the Uva Ursi. Now, the Uva Ursi is great for your spleen, your bladder, and kidney infections. So, for spleen, bladder, and kidney infections, it's very good. It's also helpful for diabetes and for cystitis. So, it's a very good herb, and like I said, it also does a, a lot of good things for your liver. Um, okay, let's see what else we got in here. Oh, I already put it down, trying to get to the next thing. Let's get this one done. Okay, it's also got stevia. Now, stevia is a, a sweetener, and it's really good for your pancreas. I've been giving it to people for the, for the, who are diabetics for 17, 18 years. And now, all of a sudden, they're realizing that, yeah, it's really good for you. So now they're making stevia in sugar packets. But see, that's just a pharmaceutical that you get there. You, you actually, you have to have the leaves because they're not taking all of those good compounds that are in the leaves. They're figuring out, they've chemically figured out in the lab, oh, well, what is it in there that's so sweet? And then they synthesize that in the lab, and they don't give you those other things. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get into the, some herbs and explain how that, that works. But let me tell you, God knew what he was doing when he made these things. You know, he, he has compounds in there that will give synergy to other compounds and compounds in there that fight the side effects in your body. And actually, the, the sweetener that's in stevia is over 200 times sweeter than table sugar. Of course, high fructose corn syrup is much sweeter, too. So that's why they push that, because it's cheaper for them, but it's very harmful for you, whereas the stevia is very good. What I often do, in fact, I need to get more to just plain stevia, because I can take a pot of coffee. Now, I like to sweeten mine. I don't use white sugar at home. I use honey or molasses or um, there's a few other things that I use, the agave, different things like that, because those are much healthier for you, whereas table sugar, I can't really think of any good health benefits for it. You know, it might be good if you need some quick calories, but they're empty calories. All right. So what else did I want to say about stevia? Well, see, diabetes, the biggest problem is your pancreas. So you definitely want to have stevia. Oh, what I do is I can make a, a whole 10, 12 pot, pot cup of coffee, and I'll just put one teaspoon of stevia of dried leaves on top of it, and let it run through, and it sweetens the whole pot. You know, it's a different taste from sugar, but it's very sweet, and it's in quite a few of the blends like this, and, and gives the tea a great taste, a great flavor, and great health benefits with it. Okay, what else? Oh, it's getting darker out here. Cinnamon, yeah. You know, they tell you, take cinnamon for diabetes. And uh, cinnamon actually helps with quite a few things, and I just... Picked up some more the other day for my house because I'll put it into a lot of things. Sometimes I'll sprinkle it in my coffee, of course, oatmeal. Sometimes I'll put it in if I'm making some beans, you know, baked beans and that sort of thing. And just recently, it actually helps with cholesterol. My friend, I was just at his house today. He just got some herbs from me. He, uh, the doctors wanted to give him some pharmaceuticals. And he said, oh, no, I don't do pharmaceuticals. And this guy's a health nut, you know, and he's got covers full of my herbs and all kind of supplements and different things and he's always calling me for advice see what i know about certain things and what i know i'll tell him what i don't i'll do research although he's a pretty good researcher too he's researching some things for me right now um so they told me that cinnamon helps with that and i said well you know i've never known it to be good for that but yeah i checked out on the, on the medical research that they did on it and it'll bring it down some if you're using it but you kind of ha have to use a good bit. I just use it as often as I can in my cooking, along with a lot of my other herbs. And, you know, you got to consider back in the day, like when I took history, maybe some of y'all remember if they taught it to you, you know, we had the Dutch Indies or East Dutch Indies Company and all these things. And they were fighting wars all over the world to go get herbs. And they weren't fighting these wars to get these herbs 
because they taste good in your food. They were getting them from medicine because that's what they've been used for historically. And that's, that's one thing my mentor really knew about. His two theses that he did on his two PhDs, one did with herbs throughout history, and the other one did with the herbs of the Hebrew nation. So it's very interesting. I, I tried to get copies of his papers, but at the time he told me, Raul, he said those things, you know, there's, they've been around for so long, I would have to dig them out. Anyway, let's forget about that. Okay, and the other thing in here is uh, peppermint. And peppermint is a very good digestive aid. It tastes good. And it does a lot of other things too. In fact, just about all of the mints are very helpful for your digestion. And I do mention that in another video. Oh, okay. They also sent me here a little sample packet of... Uh, was called Female Balance. Now, when I was in the Keys, this was tied for my second biggest seller. And I won't go through all of that right now, maybe some other time, because I do have it at home in the large bags, and we'll go through and break that down. But if you're a woman who's going through the change of life, you, you're not going to find anything out there better. And if you go to the doctors and get those things that they will give you, you might end up with breast cancer. You're much better off to take this. Yep female balance and and you're going to be so grateful you're going to be able to sleep without the night sweats you're not going to have all these mood swings that drive your husband and friends crazy i couldn't more strongly recommend it like i said and when i lived in the keys that was tied for my best seller it was either best or right behind the best seller at that time was eyebright because i helped people's vision so much with the eyebrow and to this day when I go back to the Keys even though I don't go that often anymore I do carry a bunch of herbs with me because they know me quite well down there and that's one thing that so many people buy out from me because they've used it before and they saw how it could help all right so let's get through a few of these tinctures here now here we are with the dandelion dandelion root now we already talked about the dandelion so I won't get into that there's another dandelion here's a uh, Milk thistle, milk thistle, pretty much mandatory for your liver. But here's the thing. You can't go to GNC and buy a bottle of milk thistle. Any of those standardized products, as they're called, you look on the bottle and you're going to see it'll say milk thistle, dandelion, whatever herb it says, garlic. But then it'll say below it standardized product. What that means, it's a pharmaceutical they, they've taken one of the compounds that's in that herb, they synthesize it in the lab, and that's what they give you. And once again, like I said, you got to have the other compounds that are in there too. A couple years ago when I was talking to the acting director of NIH, she was in California at the time, and, and we were talking about herbs, and, and I wanted to show them how I could get rid of hepatitis C. And she said, well, they have three universities that were trying it at the time. Well, I looked into what they were doing, and what were they doing? They were using GNC type products. It's not going to work. And, and, I'm, and I, I want to caution you on this too. I've seen so many people who've had bad liver problems. And instead of getting the real stuff, they go to GNC, they get this milk dose, and they're taking it every day. Oh, no. Don't do that either. Don't take that every day. We'll, we'll get into more of those things. We've got more milk dose, some more milk dose. Oh, another one of my top three favorite herbs for the heart. In fact, that's what the guy whose house I just left bought. Hawthorne Berry. Like I said, I, I kept having to go to the emergency room because of my heart. I had arrhythmia. I had so many problems with my heart from the arsenic poisoning. You know, it almost killed me several times. Now my heart's good again. And Hawthorne Berry, it's my best tasting of all the tinctures. It does so much good for you. And it'll give you more energy because it actually strengthens your heart muscle. All your blood vessels have three layers to them. You got the outer layer, the middle layer, and the smooth inner layer, which is the most susceptible to damage. And that's where the cholesterol or the plaque sticks to and everything builds up. And this helps to clear out that cholesterol. There are better things for plaque, but this will help the plaque from accumulate and it strengthens that inner layer of all your blood vessels. So not only does it taste good, it's very good for you. Just like in the Bible where it says, eat honey, my son, for it is good. I don't think God's saying that because it tastes good. He's saying that because it's good for you. And that's why I generally, I use honey every day. All right, I got it. More hot berry, more milk thistle. 
and more Merlins. And now, let's get into a few individual herbs. Turmeric. Yeah, all of a sudden, more and more people are talking about, hey, I use turmeric. Like I said, I put it in my cooking a lot. If I'm making a soup, if I'm making eggs, if I'm making a steak, I'll take this home. I put it in. I keep my old, you know, spice bottles and I fill them up. In fact, I just filled one up the other day with uh, capsicum, which is whoo. That's the active ingredient from cayenne peppers. And it's very good for a lot of things, which we won't get into here unless I have some here. But yeah, turmeric. I just watched a thing the other day. It was some a doctor and two other medical professionals who were in other disciplines, but they got into a leaf, Tylenol, ibuprofen, and turmeric. And overall, the only one that was safe to take, they said up to eight or nine months continuously, was turmeric. All those other have others have very harmful side effects to your body. And, and I just want to say this too, the ibuprofen comes from the bark of a tree called a monkey vine. And you'd be much safer to go ahead and eat some monkey vine than to take that pharmaceutical where they've taken one or a couple of the compounds that are in that plant and synthesized in the lab. And you know, let me tell you why. Now, I may have said this before, but I want, to, I want you to know this. Here's the thing. God made these things to be medicine for us. And the best example that I know of is Prozac. Now, God didn't make that. Those evil ones that the pharmaceuticals did. And they want to get you hooked on it and addicted on it for life. And it has all kinds of side effects. It can make you be suicidal, make you want to go out and kill people. I mean, it's not something good to be on. And they want to get you on it and keep you on it. So you keep having to come back and pay for your doctor's visits, keep getting your prescriptions. No. St. John's Wort, which is what they made Prozac from, has 42 medicinal compounds in it. When they made the Prozac, they, they synthesized three of those compounds in a lab. Now, out of those 42, some of the compounds on one end of the spectrum give a synergy to those three to make them more effective. And the other compounds fight the side effects so that you don't have all those suicidal tendencies and stuff. And I'll tell you, it works very quickly, too. I, I've had people that have I've sold them cups of it during bike week and other events. And by the time they finish the cup, they come back and go, wow, yeah, I feel so much better, man. Let me buy a bag of that. And what do you got for this and for that? And, and I've used it a couple of occasions. And I'm going to tell you, it is very potent. I would suggest if you're going to use it, now I would suggest to it if you get it, what, what to do. But you use a small amount because I've used it for, and I could still tell that 24 or even 36 hours later, I could still tell that it was in my system because of the things that it does to your brain. All right, let's keep this thing on a roll and get through this. Oh, and back to that turmeric. Well, here's some more turmeric. There's one of these going to be for me. And I uh, actually got, uh, uh, many of y'all know him, Watchman. I got his mother taking turmeric now because it also helps with cancer. See, cancer cells are very good at hiding from your immune system. But when you're taking turmeric, the cancer cells, apparently what they understand is that they, they like to take it out of your bloodstream. And once that turmeric is in those cancer cells, then your immune system can find them. They're no longer hiding. And then if your immune system's strong, you can get rid of it. And that's why I recommend Immune Builder and a few other things for cancer. Also, okay, and here's something for someone who many of y'all know too. It's from Mark Rouse. This is poke root. Now, when I had the arsenic poisoning, you know, I was a dead man walking. Things were dying off in my body. So my lymph glands all over were so swollen. Man, this one nurse, some of the doctors couldn't believe it. And it, it was more swollen than I realized because they'll push in real hard everywhere and, and check it out. Man, I had so many. It, it, it was incredible. And, and that is very dangerous. And the medical profession has nothing, nothing at all, no kind of pills, shots or anything that'll clear out your lymph system. Only thing they will do is say, well, we can surgically remove them for you. <laughs> Don't do that, people. You take this instead. Yeah, poke root. And put it this way, my complete lymph system, other than one or two little tiny lumps that were still there, it was cleared up five days. 
five days, people. And like I said, the metal profession has nothing that'll do that. Now, here's one that I don't want to get into real strongly. Let me see if I have a little something here in my notes on it. This is, this I want to get for, many of y'all know, uh, uh, D Couch or D Crouch. Her husband has, his liver is in very bad shape right now. And um, what this is, this is a, a very stronger from China. You know, a lot of my things come, oh, where is the camera? See, it says up here, China. A lot of my herbs, they, they come from all over the world, Africa, China, South America. But this is a very, very strong herb for your liver. And it works for stagnation in your liver. It'll basically, it's like putting jumper cables on the liver that's dead or, or, you know, the paddles that they put on you. I've only ever sold it to one other person because I normally would not sell it for just regular liver issues or even hepatitis C unless you're really bad to where the cirrhosis is real bad. And I've only ever sold it to one other person and they basically given him just a few months to live at the time. And so I started treating him. He was still fine. In fact, he was much better a couple of months later, but he did move out of state to, to go back, I guess, live with family or something. I'm just going to have to wait. Okay. And elderberry. This is another one I, I don't normally carry in stock, but so many people have made comments on my channel and other channels about elderberry. And it it is helpful for immune building. In fact, let me see. I, I put a few notes down here. And I didn't go through all my books or anything, this, but it is an immune builder. And they, they say that it's especially good for elderly people and for some reason in northern environments. So it could be helpful for the flu. I don't know everything about the mechanisms of how it works. I'll have to do more research on that. But other people have done a lot of research and so many people, like I say, keep suggesting it. So I did get a few of them. All right, what else I got here? Oh, yeah. Another one. It, probably in my top seven favorite. And in the ch for China, it's way up there in one of their top favorites. Photai. This thing, I've had a couple of people. In fact, that guy, Tom, that I interviewed recently, I'm sorry the volume didn't come out well. He uh, used to shake like a leaf. And uh, like he says on the videos, because of all his former drug use and everything. So he was saying he had Parkinson's and I happened to go by his house. And he was doing a bunch of research on Parkinson's. I said, oh, no, Tom, you don't need all of that stuff. This is what you need. Where is it? Flow tie. Now, I generally don't sell it in this powder form. But right now, I'm still waiting for them to get it in the uh, tincture form. And the reason I don't like selling it in the powder, it does kind of like cinnamon. If you put it into a, a liquid, it doesn't really dissolve much. It just tends to sit there. Although that's okay. You get it into your system. Your system will take care of it. Um, but, yeah, when I had the arsenic poison, man, I used to shake uncontrollably at times. My whole body would be shaking. Oh, man. And I use that full time. And, man, the shaking got less and less. It usually it works within about three to five days. If you have Parkinson's and you take this, and I have so many, I have five, four people wanting it right now, and I'm still waiting. Uh, they're doing what they can to get it for me, but it takes time to put it together. But, uh, yeah, that stuff was amazing. And then, you know, I used it for a while. Once the uh, shaking got down, then uh, I stopped using it. But I still need it from time to time because it's amazing what it does for your nerves. And what it does is, is two things. It helps protect your nerves and to rejuvenate, to help your nervous system to expand. And, and it works so well that at times, so it would work with sciatic and other things. But I've seen that at times, as it's regenerating the nervous system, occasionally some people get a little bit more pain the first few days because it is regenerating. But that soon gets taken care of. And the only other thing that I have in this batch, I think, other than what's this here? Oh, some arthritis tincture. Now, this stuff, same thing. When I had the arsenic poison, I had arthritis throughout my body. I could hardly do anything. And I went through a good bit of the arthritis tea. I wasn't doing it in tincture. I did it in the tea. And it's amazing how that it made all the swelling go down and the lumps go down and everything. And so we'll get into 
what's in that and what it does some other time. I'm trying to keep this short. And the only other thing I got was a special order for someone, Ashwandanga. And like I say, it's another one that I've never carried. I didn't even know that we carried it, although we carry over a thousand different herbs. Um, but she done her research. She wants it. She's gotten a lot of things from me in the past. And maybe I get to interview her sometime too. But uh, shoot, I don't recall off the top of my head right now just what it's good for. But anyway, folks, that's what I've got. Uh, I've already got an order partially made out and probably put it in next week. But like I said, you know, my minimum order is two hundred dollars and uh, I generally get a lot more than that. But if you saw that other video, where I have all those herbs that are expired now. I can't afford to keep stuff around and have it go bad. You know, that's really I looked at it again this morning. That's over a thousand dollars worth of herbs that I'm going to either have to use up or, or throw away or give away because I'm not going to sell outdated herbs. And not to say that some of those are, are bad. And I did have a guy, he wanted to buy some things I had well they to help him with his gout. But when I went back and checked them out, because I told him, oh, I'll, I'll give them to you real cheap, you know, for next to nothing. But when I checked them out and I tasted them, I could tell from the taste that they weren't good anymore. You know, I, I've heard said that, you know, marijuana after six months is no good. Well, that's not true. It, it can still be good much longer after that, just like they'll tell you on can't or packaging that you get you know the best buy date that, that's what this kind of is best buy dates but eventually things do go bad so i try to keep my stock fresh um so that's all i got for that i i'm somebody's been calling me right now i'm scheduled to be on a live stream here shortly so i'm gonna do that but if, if you have any questions go ahead and uh, email me or leave a comment here or if there's a particular herb you need, you let me know. And uh, I'll let you know about it. And we'll take it from there. All right, everybody. Peace out. But before we go, I got to remind you, read your Bible. Pray. Repent from your sins. Uh, I don't want to get deep on that right now. But you need to do those things. And keep in mind that these herbs, this is God's medicine. This isn't pharmaceuticals. This is God's medicine. 93% of the things that I sell are safer than caffeine. Safer than caffeine. And yet caffeine can kill you. Yeah, you go you go make you two 12 cup pots of it and drink them up. You might die. But who's going to drink 24 cups of coffee? So that's still pretty safe. All right, folks. Until the next video, I'll see you. Subscribe if you haven't already because I'm going to give you plenty more about herbs. I'm going to give you plenty more about the end times. I'm going to give you things that are going to help save your soul and your life. To save your health so that you can live healthy. You know, like I said before, God says above all things, my brethren, I wish that you would prosper and be in good health. All right. Later, folks.